opportunity to dispense this money to the less privileged. So I want every participant to take this training very serious and to ensure that he'll be able to train staff within his own district or zone. That is the essence of this training. Please pay a very good attention to the training. And if you have any challenge, ask question. All right? So I wish you all the best in this training. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. I think, uh, thank, right, thank you, sir. You. With the remark from the uh, GMICT, I don't think uh, there is need to waste further time. I want to believe that uh, the various zones are represented here in this meeting. If not the DZMs, at least there is a representative from the zone in the meeting. Uh, very quickly, I can run through the names. Okay, I'm seeing Lamin from Lagos. I can see Basi, Opioma, uh, Ayola, Babalola. Okay. I cannot see some of the zonal managers anyway, but I want to believe that the zones are represented. So at this point, I will want to call on the facilitator so that we won't waste much time. The facilitator of this program, I think, is Mr. Chibuzo. Are you are still online, sir. Okay, Mr. Chibuzo, please, you have the floor. Uh, please, I want to beg us, let us maintain decorum in this meeting. Let us try as much as possible to mute our mics. When you want to say something, there is an indicator there by a show of hand. Just indicate. When I see your hand, I will give you permission to talk, please. If you are not talking, please mute your mic. If you are not talking, please mute your mic. I beg you, mute your mic. But very quickly, there is somebody using a name, one, two, three, four, five. Can you introduce yourself, please? Sir, it is Abdul Salam Ibrahim. Sorry? Sorry, there is somebody using one, two, three, four, five, six as a name. Please, can you introduce yourself? All right. Okay, you have left, Abi. All right, no problem. Okay, uh, Mr. Basiru, I can see your hand. You want to say something? Basiru Mohammed, Basiru Mohammed. Yes, good morning, sir. My name is. Yeah, please make it brief. Sorry, your network is breaking. We can barely hear what you're saying. Yes, I'm having, I'm, I'm having network issue. Good morning, sir. Please, can you turn off your video and stick to audio, please? So I should turn my video. Turn off your video and stick to audio. Maybe it will be better so we can hear you, please. Very quickly, make your comment so that we okay. can start the training. Okay, my name is Sawal Basiru Muhammad from H representing Hadeja District, sir. All right, nice to have you on board. Okay, thank you, sir. All right, thank you so much. Please take no WX3. Can you mute your mic? Mr. Benjamin Kolawale, please mute your mic. Basiru, please mute your mic as well. Jigawa Abdul Salam, please mute your mic. We'll do introduction later. So at this point, let me call on the first. Mute your mic, please. I'm begging you. At this point, let me call on the facilitator, a representative of Three Line Card Management Services. He's no other person than Mr. Chibuzo. Mr. Chibuzo, please, you have the floor. Thank you. Okay. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Um, my name is Chibuzo. I have some of my colleagues here as well. Um, like um, Dr. Ogaga, Dr. Ogaga said earlier, this training is actually very necessary so that we are all um, in line with um, the oncoming disbursement for NCTU. Um, I think we've done about two phases already. We did the first and second run within November, December, and there was one we did around September. <laughs> Those issues were attributed to either operational or technical um, gaps, basically. And what we've done is to go back to fix the, the part where we identified as um, technical issues, right? Um, the operational bit is something that is actually very important that all of us here on this um, meeting are aware of, so that going forward, we're able to handle them and um, do them properly. You know, part of the issues that were identified is um, the way agents that were going to do disbursement were embodied on the system, right? 
Now, but before I continue, um, I want to believe that all of us understand the aim of NCTO and what the program is about. Okay, um, if we are all on that same page, then it's fine. But if not, can I see a show of hand if you don't know what NCTO is about so that we can, we can just um, indicate by raising your hand on the chat. Okay, I can see one hand up. Uh, okay, so, okay, two people don't understand what NCTO is, okay. Oh, three, oh, fine. Okay, so, um, Okay, so sometime last year, or I think, yeah, last year, there was a bid around for super agents in Nigeria to come and submit quotes um, on this program for NCTU to allow um, agent networks to disburse monies to the poor, the poorest of the poor in the society, right? NCTU is a national conditional cash transfer office, right? Um, so that's basically what it is. So the whole idea is have an agent network that has footprint in all the local governments in Nigeria to disburse monies to, to people, right? And the target is actually the poor. Now, NCTO has its office in Abuja. So prior to the disbursement time, they already gone around to register the, um, the beneficiaries of this program. So the beneficiaries are already onboarded on NCTO system. Our own task is basically to hand that those cash to the beneficiaries, basically. And while we are doing that as well, we were mandated that because of the nature of um, the locations where these beneficiaries are located, yeah, there, there is that need for us to disburse um, to these beneficiaries in an offline mode, meaning that you go to those locations, whether there is internet or not, you are still able to disburse funds to these beneficiaries. And that's basically um, part of the task we we're saddled with, right? And we're also saddled with the responsibility of building um, an application that would allow agents to go into the field and disburse, you know? And um, my post on its part, as the owner of the scheme, more or less, is also saddled with the operational task, you know, how money would get to those locations and recruiting the agent or nominating the agents that will do these disbursements, you know, and all of that and onboarding them on the system that Freeline has already built, right? So those are some of the responsibilities that NIPOST was saddled with. Um, let me quickly um, show part of the issues that we noticed during the last run, right? And then um, we can now continue with the training, you know, so it's important that we understand or have a, 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 an insight into the background of this whole thing, why this training is actually very necessary that we have it. Um, let me share my screen quickly. Oh, okay, the host has disabled screen sharing. Please, can the host enable or allow me to share screen? Nipost ICT headquarters, the host. You can share your screen now. You can share your screen now. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Can can everyone see my screen? Can yes. everyone we can see, see it? it? Yes, we can see it. Yes, sir. Right, we can see it, sir. Okay. Okay. So um, the technical issues, like I said, has already been handled. Um, so we'll just quickly go through the um, operational issues that were identified. Um, so part of the issue we identified from the last run was that some of the devices used by agents for disbursement 
were below the recommended size. So we had some people using one gig RAM and all of that. And being that this scheme is going to run in an offline mode as well, it is important that we have phone with enough memory space to accommodate the beneficiaries that will be downloaded on there. You know, because you know that part of the data we are getting from NCTO contains the image of the caregiver and the alternate as well. You know, so such information to sit on the phone with one gig and you expect speed, it was a big challenge during the last cycle. You know, and we recommended that a minimum of two gig RAM be provided on the devices that were going to be used. You know, and part of it as well was that agents were allowed to use their own device. You know, as against our initial belief that um, Nipos were going to provide devices for the scheme. You know, so we saw that some people were using their personal devices to do this disbursement, which is totally um, against the agreement that we had, you know, it also constituted to a lot of um, operational issues. Then we also realized that people tend to forget their password a lot, right? And for every time they forget password, the time it takes for us to do reset and all of that, you know, because some of the email addresses that were provided weren't either correct or there was one issue or the other tied to the email because when you do a password reset, it sends you a default password to your registered email, right? So those were part of the issues. And, you know, by the time you are done resolving that issue, I mean, you would have eaten into the time that have been allotted for this disbursement, right? Um, we also noticed that um, there were insufficient agents to do this disbursement. So you see a lot of agents are shortening in between words, you know, because the original plan was to have an agent tied to a particular word. But we now realize that in between, you would see that um, some of the coordinators will come back to ask that this agent be remapped to another word and all of that. You know, with all of those um, movement, it took a lot of time and it constituted a lot of um, noise on the, on the whole um, scheme. Now, some manual payments were also made without using the device, right? I mean, because it's an offline um, payment, it's important that you do synchronization so that at the end of the cycle, we all get the all the payment that you've made on the device sync it back to the server. You know, that was really very necessary. But we realized that some payments were done manually by the night post staff, you know, which was totally against the agreement that we had. Um, now, like I said earlier, there were limited devices that saw a lot of people using their own, um, their own mobile devices to do this disbursement, you know. Now, inside this place, we already recommended, um, made some recommendation, and this document was also shared with the NIPOST um, officials that we've been interacting or interfacing with, right? So now, um, we all now agreed. Of course, on the technical side of things, we, we realized that it took time for the, the, the uh, beneficiary list to be downloaded you know, because of the bulky nature of those lists, right? So what we did on our side was to split it so that it will now be in batches. So when you are downloading um, beneficiaries from the system, you know, it will come in batches as against trying to download everything all at once, you know. So those are some of the refinements that we had to do on the app to ensure um, that it is very fast and swift you know, during this buzzment. And we also recommended that because those locations don't have stable network, right? We agreed that before an agent steps out for this buzzment each day, right? Beneficiary list would have been downloaded on the devices. So it's not when you get to those locations where there is limited network, you're not trying to um, either download or you're trying to sync, you know? So the idea is, do all of those operational things in an office where there is stable network. Once you are done, then you go to the field the next day on the assumption that everything is now sitting on your device. 
So it is now very fast for you to do disbursement because it doesn't have to go to the server to do any fetch because everything has been localized on the device. You know, um, also realized that synchronization was very difficult because people were trying to synchronize in areas where there is limited network, right? And when you are syncing, it means you are pushing all your activities for the day upstream so that it will be registered on the server so we can actually send it to NCTO, um, NCTO system for proper reporting. You know, but we realized that it takes a lot of time. So as well on our side, we had to split it so that synchronization is done in batches. So you can actually be looking at it and you see the progress made so far and how many percent you have synced um, those transactions to our system. Um, yeah, I think that's part of that. Those are those were the the issues that we that we identified, right? During the last disbursement. So what is expected of us going forward is um, would would introduce the we we'll reintroduce the system again to you. I have my colleagues here that would do that demonstration for you to see how it really works, right? We'll reintroduce the system to you and we'll list out some of the expectations um, for you to um, follow, right? All the things that you need to do before you get to the point where um, the agent is now allowed to disburse. I'm happy that we're talking to the IT um, arm of NIPOST, which means that it's your responsibility is basically that of support. So you are the ones that will now interface with the agent to see if they are having any form of um, technical or operational issues on the field, they will always reach out to you to ask for, for solution. And I trust that you'll be able to proffer those solutions when you are called upon. Um, basically, the, the, the solution is actually very straightforward, right? Because it is, um, um, it is just all about disbursement. So it has like three major phases. So the first one is basically onboarding the agent. So that part where NIPOST has already identified all the agents that needs to go into all those works. Our first responsibility is to pull those beneficiary details from NCTO, right? Once we get it pulled from NCTO system, we're able to tell the number of words that will be involved for this busment, the states and the words. Now, it's now on NIPOS to map agent to each of those words because it is a report required by NCTO at the end of the day to know how many agents have been assigned to, um, to a particular state, right? Because, so let's take, for instance, we have one state and it has a lot of local governments, right? It is for, please give me a sec, let me quickly show you something. Okay, sorry for the for the break. So I would hand over to my colleague Johnson to run you through the training slide and um, explain in details to you what is required and what you need to do um, from the onboarding phase to the part where you download the mobile app, right? Um, because now that we've made some fixes, it's also important that you understand how all of this will flow in. I have two of my colleagues here already that would help us run through all of those processes. I have my colleague Olabi on the call. 
I have my colleague Chinedu on the call. I have my colleague Johnson also on the call, right? So they would they would um, they would take up this um, phase of the training, put you through on what is required, run you through the training slide, um, you know, from from the basic concept of this whole scheme and what on what is actually required and how you can navigate your way on the portal and also on the mobile app to do to do all of those things that you've been asked to do um johnson you have the floor now good morning everybody so I'm Johnson, and I'll be continuing from where my colleague stopped. So I'll be briefly talking about how we can access the app and the disbursement process in general. OK, I think we can see my screen. Yes, yes we can see it. I'm still the one sharing. Do you want to, do you want me to stop sharing so you can share your own? Yes. Okay. So can we see the screen now? Yes, we can. Okay, so. Okay, uh, I think we all know what the institute is all about. As my colleague has earlier discussed, and so I won't be spending time in this part. And then this is our service. I think we have, we also have a report on what it is about. So this is where I'll be starting from. Uh, what does the mobile do? First and foremost, it allows the agent, okay, sorry. Okay, so the mobile, it allows the agent to set up uh, mobile devices for the NCTU disbursement. Now, I'll talk about how the mobile, what the mobile should be like and how it should function. As my colleague earlier said, uh, just not any device can be used for, divorce, for the disbursement because uh, most of this disbursement we do, it requires uh, data of large size. For example, um, our last two disbursements, we noticed that KB had the highest number of beneficiaries. So uh, for an app to disburse files, it will be saving the images and the details of over 40,000 beneficiaries. You don't expect an app of one gig uh, RAM to support this. So the mobile we'll be using must be a mobile device being able to, uh, number one, it has to have good speed. It needs to have good memory space because images will be saved and the files and data of these beneficiaries too will also be saved. And since all this will be done in offline mode, that means the phone itself will be the one saving it. Then it's when uh, the for synchronization comes that you have to now move everything from the phone into the air. So now first and foremost, uh, the setup part is very uh, paramount in this part before any agent can actually be called an agent. The agent has to be set up on the gravity portal. So after the agent is being set up, then you can now have access 
to log into the app. Now, the link of the app, app will be sent to us because we've actually made some changes and fixes. So we will have to send a new app to us. So the link will be sent to us when it's time and then we can download it. So after downloading it, uh, okay. I'm sorry. The first thing is to download the app. After downloading the app, uh, we would have to log in. Okay, this is the login page. Now, once you download the app and you install it, then you open it. This is the first screen you would have. Now, this first screen, you can see the part where you can input your username and also your password. So after becoming an agent, that's after being created as an agent, you'll be assigned a password and also a username. So once you uh, enter your username and your password, you would be taken to a screen whereby okay, before this, you're taken to a screen Remember, you have to uh, change your password and your PIN. So the password assigned to you has to be changed. So you will just change it. And when you do that, you come back here and you log in. So when you log in, also, if I continue, for those people that have forgotten their password, the forgot password module, that's at this point, is below the uh, login button. So once you click on forgot password, you can easily retrieve your forgotten password. And then if you have any issues as we got that, you can also contact us. So now once you log in, finally you've logged in. Once you log in, the first screen you will see is this. So this screen, you have some modules here, account opening, enrollment, deposits, withdrawal, and transfer. It doesn't consign us. We are particular about the NCTO module. This is where we'll be working. So you click on this NCTO button, and then it takes you to the dashboard. Now, as you can see on this dashboard, the total amount is zero, and the amount paid is zero. Now, this is how it works. From here, let me just explain each of them. Though I will still be giving a better explanation about each of the modules, but let me just do a recap about everything. Now, the first thing you have here is your total amount and the amount paid. Now, your total amount is the total amount you are being given to this boss. So, for example, if you are being given two million naira to this boss out. Okay, you are expected to have, like in cash now, you have been given two million naira to this boss out. You are expected to have in cash two million naira. And also here, you should have two million naira. Now, the amount paid, once you've paid out of the two million naira, you've paid 10,000 naira. 10,000 naira will be recorded here at this point. So, now, how do we get this two million naira? The first thing is every agent has been assigned to a word, okay? So, and each word have its listed beneficiaries underneath. So now, as an agent, to have access to these beneficiaries, they already know their word, the beneficiary, they know their word, and they know where to get their money from. So the first thing you have to do is to download beneficiaries. Okay, I won't um, say it in details because I'll still explain it later in the, pre in the next slide. So the first thing is to download beneficiaries. Beneficiaries, they are the uh, people that are entitled to the payment. Now, after doing that, you download your schedule. Now, your schedule is, is actually your money equivalent in the app. So after downloading schedule, then your money equivalent will actually appear here. 
that is your two million naira we appear here. So the schedule is being downloaded irrespective to the number of um, beneficiaries you've downloaded. For example, you downloaded 20 beneficiaries that are meant to collect 10,000 each. So now 10,000 each for 20 beneficiaries is about, uh, that is 20, 200,000, right? So uh, your, your schedule now should be 200,000. That's your total amount because you've downloaded um, beneficiaries of 20 beneficiaries, which are meant to collect 10,000 each. So when you download schedule, what will appear here is what? 200,000 error, which is meant exactly that 20 beneficiaries you downloaded. So after that, you are now fine. Once this is fine, you can now move down to the field. Because this should be done going down to the field. It's when this is fine, you are now permitted to go down to the field. Then you do your development. You do your disbursement. So the disbursement is where you uh, share the money out to the beneficiaries. And then after that, upload transaction. This is the part where uh, you have to come back on that. And note, after, okay, and note, after downloading beneficiaries and schedule, this, both of them, they are done online. So the only thing here that is done offline is the disbursement. That's the only thing done offline. So after the disbursement, okay, you can now uh, proceed down to your, to upload transactions. So that's the first part. Now, let, let me start explaining each of them, one after the other. Please, if you have questions about um, any of these parts, you can, you can ask me before I go into explaining them in details. Or should I just uh, keep the question part till after the training? I think you should. Okay, till after the training, right? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, right, no problem. So, okay, now, the first thing now is to download. Please, let's take note of this part so that we won't do one before the other. Some people might actually download schedule before downloading beneficiaries and that thing can tweak the system. So the first thing is to download beneficiaries. Now we've made this process uh, easy and, and it should be, we should be able to understand the process. Now, when you click on the download beneficiaries, it starts downloading in batch. Now, each batch has 100 beneficiaries. For example, in a ward, you have uh, 300 beneficiaries that are meant to be paid. Now, from this 300, okay, you now assign two agents to pay this 300. That means it's either they go 150, 150, or maybe 200, 100, or maybe just like that. So now, out of this go, we have 300. So the first one, because since the batches are in 100, 100, when you click, the first batch will be 100. So you downloaded 100. That's for one. When you click again, it downloads another 100. Then when you click again, it downloads another 100, make it 300. So if you, want, if you want the first agents to download only 200 beneficiaries, you click the first, you click once, 100, you click in the second 100, then you stop. Then you cannot go ahead to download schedule. So it's now download schedule for only 200. And then if the other agents now comes up, you cannot download the remaining 100. But then if you want, only one agent to pay for everything. The agent can now click on download beneficiary three times. So you to download the old 300. So my mo one of us might want to ask a question. Okay, what if we have like 450 people? How can we share that? Since it is in 100 now, when you click on download, the first 100 will download, click on it again, the second 100 will download, 
click on it again, the 200 will download. Then the many 50, when you click on it, the last 50 will download. So it, it can only download 100 and less than 100 for a batch, but it can't download more than 100 for a batch. And please, let's also, uh, let's also look at it to ensure that uh, everything is being downloaded because sometimes uh, the beneficiary, like one of the experience we had before, uh, a word might have like maybe 900 beneficiaries and we discover that only able to download like 800. So let's keep all this. That's why this should be done before going to the field. So you ensure that if there are any issues, it should be corrected. Maybe you, you downloaded more than what you are supposed to download or you are, you, you are able to download less than what you are supposed to download. So all the issues will be resolved before going down to the field. So the field is just meant to for disbursement and nothing else. So the next part now is the downloading schedule. So now after downloading Okay. So after downloading beneficiaries, the next thing is to download the payment schedule. Now this part is very crucial because uh, you have to be very careful about it because this is where the money, money part comes in. Now, when you click on download schedule, okay. Now it also downloads in batch. You understand what it's just that this one is a one time download. You don't have to click and re-click and re-click. It just downloads once. So when you once you click on the download schedule, so uh, the the amount, the amount due for the beneficiaries we appear on the dashboard. That's uh, where you have total amount. Okay, after downloading your schedule, it appears there. But you have to be very, uh, you have to note this, that your number one, you know how many um, beneficiaries you downloaded. So you have to ensure that the amount downloaded from your schedule is equivalent to the amount of beneficiaries you download. So all these two, they have to be done before going down to the field. So if there's any issues, maybe you find out that okay, the amount on your screen on your total amount is greater than your cash at hand. Once it is greater, then you have to report this. You don't say, okay, well, uh, I just have to, what I'll do is just down to disburse what I have in cash. And then uh, the remaining should just be like that. No, we have to, you have to report this and ensure that everything is balanced. And unless you have been given the go ahead, you don't have to take something that is not, that is inappropriate down to the field or you find out that the cash you have at hand is actually more than what is appearing on your screen. Because some people will say, ah, thank God, I only have to disburse what is on my screen and, and whatever is left. So we shouldn't do like that because at the end of everything, when we are trying to synchronize all these things we count, it will show that, okay, you actually disbursed less than what you're about to disburse, what you're supposed to disburse. It will definitely show on the system. So whenever we have these issues, let's try and report them so that it will all be balanced before going down to the field. So okay. Okay, sorry for that, please. So, okay. so as I was saying, uh, after uh, your um, downloading of payment schedule now, once you've ensured that everything is fine, you move on to the disbursement part. So that's the third phase of the process. So that's the third phase of the process. Okay, sorry, my. So when you click on uh, 
the disbursement part. Now, there are two things. Every beneficiary they are disbursing to has uh, the QR code with them because the survey has been taken before time and each of them Okay, and each of them have their uh, QR codes. So now, when this beneficiary comes, when you click on this bus, now two things comes up. The first one is the enter wallet ID, and the second one is the scan barcode. These agents already have their wallet ID with them, but these two um, features are actually for a reason. Sometimes the barcode might fail, then you can just use the wallet ID model. Now, once you click on enter with ID, now it brings out this screen where you can uh, fill all of these things. So a beneficiary has all these details with them. The part they sleep that has been shared with them, they have it all with them. So when you fill it, you can now make your disbursement. But then if they have their QR codes to which they should have, you can now click on the scan barcode. When you click on scan barcode, then, uh, there's a kind of a camera will be opened. Now, when this camera is open, you can easily, when the camera is open, you can easily just um, scan the barcode. Once you scan the barcode, the details of uh, the agent, oh, sorry, not agent now, the beneficiaries will just actually appear. It will appear in this format, just the way the entire wallet ID is. It will appear in the format. So, after doing that, okay, and you ensure number some agents will come because one of the um, issues we experienced was that some beneficiaries will actually come. They've actually gotten their money, but then they will now give their QR code to maybe their friends or relatives to come back to collect another one. Then thinking that maybe when you scan again, you will still repay them. But now once that happens. The system tells this QR, this um, particular beneficiary has already been paid. Once you see that, that means there's every tendency this person has collected before. You understand? So every uh, previous error as regards this has been fixed. So going forth, once you see that um, notification that this uh, beneficiary has already been paid, that means beneficiary has already been paid no matter the tears no matter what he has been paid already then you move if he has not been paid then you can now click it now when you click this please let us always note that uh your dashboard okay your total amount let me um, go back to this your total amount must always read For example, So, if you disburse, for example, now you have 2 million here, the amount paid, and you've paid 10,000 as a beneficiary, your amount paid should uh, appear as. 10,000 Naira, and your total amount should be reduced to uh, 1,990,000. Mm -hmm. If you don't observe this, if this doesn't happen, please, you are not advised to go to the next beneficiary because some people may also complain previously that they were making payments upon payments, but then they refuse to check their dashboard and then they discover that um, as they were paying, it was not impacting on the total amount. And they some paid to millions, they paid to millions. So how could we trade this? And we are knowing that this payment is offline. So please, as we are paying, as I'm making a disbursement, if you disburse 10,000, you expect that your amount paid should increase by 10,000 and your total amount should reduce by 10,000. Okay. Okay, still on this now. That's one of the things you should note. 
And then another thing now is that uh, you might have some errors. Don't know, you might have errors, any kind of errors. Please, whenever you have errors and you are not able to debug, there's no point, maybe because of threats or anything from the beneficiary. There's no point paying. Once you have errors, you tell them you'll come back to them or anything, I don't know. But just make sure you don't do any payment once you have error on a particular beneficiary. Once you have error, move on to the next beneficiary. Any error, but just make sure you've reported the error so the IT team can make their research on why that error. But then make sure you don't disperse, you continue to the next team or the next beneficiary. So, and also another thing I would advise is that for documentation and accountability purpose, we are really advised to uh, pay like one agent per word so that we can just give account of a particular word in a full sheet. So it won't be like it is being splitted and splitted and splitted. We want every word to be able to be accountable, accountable for, you understand? So let's just try our best to, uh, it might take our time, but it is worth it because time to correct the errors might take longer. So let's just one agent per, um, per word. And if there's any need, to uh, switch maybe to involve another agent. Let's ensure it is a totally new agent and not an agent that has previously disbursed in a former word. Maybe because he has finished, you now merge him to another word. Automatically, the, the, uh, the documents will be changed because the agent will be appearing twice. And it might not be, it might be hard for us to actually document to give proper documentations on the on the word on the two words, so it's advised that one agent should dispose in a word. So after that, uh, let's go to the. Okay, now after your disbursement must have been completed, the next part is the upload transactions, which is also known as your synchronization process. So. The disbursement is done online. The first thing is for you to upload your transaction. Number one, you have to ensure that you've completed all your disbursements and either your team lead or your coordinator has given you the go ahead that, okay, you are fine with this word. You can go ahead and synchronize or upload your transactions. You don't click on that button on no reason if your disbursement has not been completed, must make sure uh, your disbursement is completed before you click on the upload trans um, transaction. Now, let me just quickly read on uh, the notes here. One, the, the synchronization function must be done online. It must be done online. And please note that the network must be good. Like your network must be good especially areas like KB now that they, they, can, they can synchronize up to 40 million, 20 million, 5 million. Those are actually large amounts. And the implication of it is this, the images have been saved. And some of these images, some of these images, they have large size. Some can be 2 MB, 1.5 MB, 3 MB, 4 MB, even as much as 5 MB, because the kind of phones will all devices will be using too. Definitely, they will be sophisticated devices. So two images will be saved. And now for these images to be saved, it's really has to have good network. For most of us that has experienced, maybe you are sending file through Bluetooth. You know how it is when you want to send like five pictures, the time you have to wait. Now imagine, you're sending 100,000 pictures, not even 100, for 100,000 beneficiaries, it's 200,000 pictures have been saved. Now imagine sending 200,000 pictures. You don't expect it to send in five minutes. Of course, you don't expect it to send in five minutes. So at the same time, yeah, that's why your network has to be very good. I would advise, like what I put here, I would really advise a 4G network. 3G network is not bad. But then if you can access 4G network, it will be fine too, just to aid and ensure speed. 
You understand? So the network has to be good. It is very paramount. And then whenever you are disbursing, it is nice to use a device in which calls won't be coming in. Because all those calls, when the call comes in, there will be a breach. You understand? There will be a breach unless you are using Wi-Fi. And Wi-Fi is even strongly encouraged in case, uh, because if it's your normal mobile data, data, uh, calls might come in and it might call. And once it calls, uh, what the system does is that once it's caught, it will start all over again. But when it starts all over again, all those parts, the, the beneficiaries that has already been synchronized, it will, it will just read through them. But then as it reads through them, it, it will say, oh, these guys has already been synchronized before. It will read through them till the point where it stopped. Then it will now continue downloading like that. But it also takes time to start reading through everything from beginning again. So to avoid that, it's better to use a Wi-Fi. You understand? Maybe get smile or anything uh, and just connect to the hotspots. So it is very ad advisable to use that for your synchronization. So you have to be patient at least and ensure that there's enough power supply because once the phone goes up, goes off, you know it is offline. So there's every tendency your uh, your details might disappear or anything. But once you put it online and it is online, then this the with all the process. Will be so I would really advise that we ensure that there's enough power supply. The phone should be fully charged and it should be connected to light. If so, there should also be like power bank with you or anything. So, and also uh, for every location, I will advise that the uh, synchronization should be done one after the other, one device, because every of the synchronization is going down to the same server. So if you are doing two at once, the, uh, the beneficiary details might clash. Though we are working on it, on that, but for safety purpose, it is really advised that we do it one at a time. That's per location. And I know everybody cannot finish this buzzing at a particular time. So once you finish this buzz, the team lead or anybody can just conduct the synchronization. Yeah, there's network, so one after the other. It is, it is okay like that. So this process should be closely monitored. It should be closely monitored. And then every word, maybe uh, due to time constraints, you're not able to disburse to a particular word. It is, and you downloaded beneficiaries and downloaded schedule. It is, uh, it is very necessary, or let me say it is mandatory for you to also synchronize because synchronization serves at the end of that cycle. So one of the issues we had too was about this. Some people that did not synchronize in the first cycle, they downloaded beneficiaries and downloaded schedule. But at the end of the day, because they were not able to reach out to those words, they did not synchronize. So when the uh, time for the second cycle disbursement, they still went ahead, downloaded beneficiaries, downloaded schedule, but time to synchronize. Now, the fourth cycle, because you did not end it, it got merged to the second cycle. And now, instead of uh, the during synchronization of the second cycle, instead of those data to be saved in the second cycle, it went ahead and it was now being saved because the uh, space for the first cycle was still void. It went ahead and started filling those void spaces with the data meant for the second cycle. So it is very mandatory that after every uh, cycle, after every synchronization, even though it is one person you paid, make sure you synchronize. Just that, synchronize, that synchronization is just like putting an end or closing that cycle. So once you do that, we know that, okay, whatever is the first cycle 
is in fourth cycle and whatever is in second cycle has been started and it has been closed in the second cycle. So this is just the main process for the disposal. If we can keep to all of this, I think uh, everything should be better. So this is the summary of the process. Now you ensure that the mobile app is installed on your device. I'm just giving us a summary now of, every, of the, the mobile app process. Ensure that the mobile app is installed on your device and your kind of device must be a minimum of two gig RAM, minimum. So please, once you, if you're an agent and they give you a device, ensure that your device has a minimum of two gig RAM and ensure that your storage, your phone capacity should be nothing less than, nothing less than two gig. Or let me just say, let me just say four gig. It should be nothing less than four gig because data, large data, large files will be saved inside. So first and foremost, ensure your RAM is nothing minimum of two gig. Ensure your internal memory is a minimum of four gig. And ensure you have a four gig net, 4G network. And then it is highly preferable that you use a Wi-Fi in case there are incoming calls, or if there's a way for you to ban incoming calls during any of the online process, during, during pay, um, downloading of beneficiaries, downloading of payment schedule or synchronization. So if it is possible for you to hold every course at that time, please do. Then after ensuring that the app is installed on your device, open the app and log in. If you have any issue, maybe the app is crashing, please don't hesitate to return to report to the ICT team. Uh, three line will always be on standby during every disbursement. And also the ICT team for NIPOS will always be on standby. So ensure that you report and every, um, every issues will be attended to immediately. So after that, click on download beneficiaries. So after you've uh, logged in, you can now download beneficiaries. After that, you download schedule. I believe we all know the process now. Then after that, you disburse. Then after disbursing, you click on your upload transaction, which is also known as synchronization. So these processes, please, they have to be strictly ad adhered to. Okay. So, uh, okay, I see I have one more slide. I'm sorry. Okay. Now, the summary of precautions to be taken during the process. I'll just recap this uh, so that just for uh, remembrance. First, before pulling beneficiaries and schedule, ensure to be in an area where the network is good and ensure all downloadings are done before going to the field. So I've said this times without number. So let us ensure that everything is settled. Your total amount in cash should be your total amount on the app. If it is different, make sure you report. Then ensure you are disposing to the right word assigned to you. Some people will go to the wrong word and then you come back to say, when you scan QR codes with the wrong word, it will definitely come out as this beneficiary is not on the list or it, this um, beneficiary has not been assigned payment schedule or something. If you're on the wrong word, you might receive some of these errors. So ensure whichever word you are being merged to, ensure that is the particular word you go to for the disbursement. Then each batch contains 100 beneficiary per click. Ensure the amount on your dashboard correspond with your total cash amount. I just said that no cash should be given to beneficiaries if the disbursement amount has not been deducted for the total sum on the dashboard. I've said earlier on, once you dis once your uh, after, once your disbursement process is not successful or is successful, 
but yet when you check your total amount it has not been reduced and your amount paid has not been increased once you notice that please even though the process was successful but the dashboard is not being impacted please do not give the beneficiaries the cash for you to do so you have to report to the IT team when they give you go ahead you can do that better see you can just set that particular agent a beneficiary aside okay i've not paid you but your disbursement process was successful it's just that it was not being impacted on the mobile app just stay aside your money is intact so that because if you just if you don't um, do a kind of documentation of that agent when it, and you tell the agent to comes back when it comes back it will they it, it actually get a response of uh the it, the beneficiary has already been paid you understand because the disbursement process was successful so it is advised when a disbursement process is successful but the amount was not being impacted on the app set that agent aside set the money aside and then report to the ICT team so if proper checks are being made the beneficiaries will still have their money so dashboard should be closely monitored as disbursement takes place so of course because everything is going on fine going on fine you might now take your mind off looking at your app because you want to cover large areas please make sure time to time you can just have one of the uh if you have maybe a supporter or somebody advice that can be helping you monitor the app to ensure that for every disbursement you do the impact is being made on the app so you have to watch watch the dashboard closely so follow all process duly to avoid any error of any sort all the process let's try to Okay. Okay. Sorry for that. So let's try to um, follow all the process duly. Like, try not to be meander. Like, try try not to use your knowledge, because this thing is actually a technical thing. It involves serial ICT and computer. So let's don't try to use our knowledge to say this thing should be able to work. Everything is being programmed into processes. So let's try to follow all the processes, all the laid out processes that has been given. Because once you maneuver anything, it always has its negative effect. So let's try our best to follow everything. So this, the manual record should be taken as disbursement is being done. Yes, for record purpose too, as you are disbursing, let there be manual uh, recording somebody should be writing it down. And at least there should be a, a signature that this thing is correct from either the team lead or somebody of higher rank. There should be a signature at the end of everything. Then the, the synchronization uh, function, which is the upload transaction function will be done online. I've said that earlier on. Synchronization should not be made till all the disbursement is completed. I've said it earlier on, even though it is one person you disburse to make sure you synchronize. If you don't disburse to anybody, provided you've downloaded beneficiaries and, and payment schedule, you must synchronize at the end of each cycle. Then strong network is needed for this process, preferably forging network. I've said that earlier on. So the process should be closely monitored. Yes, everybody, all the uh, supervisors, should try to monitor every process. I will, I will advise every agent to have two phones, the one you use for call, for your calls and the one you use for the transaction. And please, one more thing, I also advise, please, it's not too good if agents use their phone because we don't know the condition of such devices. We don't know the conditions. And then if there is, an issue unless the agent is ready to release his or a mobile device for a minimum of a week in case there's any issue unless the agent is ready to do that because some agents 
after using their device, and if there's an issue, they won't want to release their device. And this device holds all the money. No matter what, your device is the money until after synchronization. Your device is your money. If you have been assigned 4 mil 40 million naira, that device you are using is the 40 million naira. So you have to hide it. It mustn't get lost. It mustn't get formatted, formatted or any of such issues till after synchronization. So larger numbers of beneficiaries in a world can result in longer synchronization process. So ensure to the patient till synchronization is fully completed. So some of us when I feel, ah, this synchronization is taking one hour. Maybe it is not working and then you might cancel it. No, for words that the synchronization that have high number of beneficiaries, 100,000, 200,000, uh, and all of that, you don't expect it, as I've explained earlier, you don't expect it to uh, get downloaded in five minutes or 10 minutes. It needs time. And that's why you have to have good power supply and good data with you. So don't look at it as maybe it is not working. Once you can see your screen, synchronization process is going. Try your best not to cut it for any reason. Then for what's not been during disbursement, it's advised after cycle, synchron after the cycle, synchronization of the device should still take place. So I've said this earlier on. So for what's so not being disbursed, maybe due to time constraints or due to any other factor, maybe mobility or anything. But once you've downloaded payment schedule and beneficiary, it is advice that uh, you just have to do the synchronization. So uh, that's just the best thing. So after the synchronization, your device will be free and for another cycle. So let's just try our best to ensure that synchronization is done after every cycle, either disbursement happens or it doesn't happen. So, okay, this, that's all with the training. Okay, I think my colleagues will still have to talk, but I don't know if we, if we should, okay, I think we should take the questions. So we'll be giving answers today. So if you have any questions as regards any part, you can ask your questions now. Mr. Kingsley, are you there? Okay, thank you very much for, um, uh, your name is uh, Oluwa Tosi. That's what I'm seeing, right? Okay, yes. Okay, I'm seeing Oluwa Tosi on your line. So I'm going to address it with that. Thank you so much for that wonderful um, lecture. It's such a very, it's such a, an eye opener and a very detailed training. Thank you very much. And also to your colleagues, I say thank you for making yourself available at this time to train us. So it's time for questioning. Before we take the, the questions, we see some hands are raised. Please, can you just, um, uh, mute your mic when you are called upon you can unmute it and ask your question uh, before we uh, take those questions i don't know if uh, it's possible for you to send us the file you mean the, the slides yes the slides okay we'll call them and share them to your email and you can share with others uh, okay i think even on this platform also there's a place you can actually share a file so uh, that's we'll do that Okay, thank you very much. Okay, please, we want to take um, Sam Sudin. Please, can you ask your question? Hello, sir. Hello, good morning, sir. Okay, sir. I have uh, two questions, sir. Even though I don't know how uh, the mapping of agent is being done or what is being considered to map agent, but I feel, uh, for example, uh, an agent is being mapped to a more than uh, one word, and uh, this mapping is done based on the maybe the number of uh, hello. 
the mapping right is on, being, right on, right on. Okay. Maybe the mapping is being Maybe done based on the number mapping. of uh, beneficiary in a particular in on those words. Uh, can the agent, for example, synchronize after can the agent, for example, synchronize after uh, after disbursing to all the world, or oh, he he must disburse after fin uh, he must synchronize after uh, finishing a after finishing disbursement for a for a word. And the second question, sir, is uh, you talk about a, a team leader. Uh, is it the team leader that is responsible for the synchronization for the synchronization, for the synchronization after uh, for a particular word uh, or for, 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 for a particular team? Uh, is it the team leader that is responsible for the synchronization or the individual that has uh, that has disbursed the uh, the money? Uh, that's my two questions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that uh, question. Like I said earlier on, uh, one agent is to a word. You understand? Word. Um, is completed. Synchronization next. So there's no any other process attached to it. No, no. Agent. Um, is building the next thing is for you to synchronize and then your next question okay team lead responsible the reason, please speak up speak up they can hardly hear you okay okay let me just recap hope you can hear me now yes we can hear you okay let me just recap i said for every agent should be matched to a word. One agent cannot be matched to two words. So after the agent finished his disbursement, synchronization is the next thing and no other process. So just synchronize one agent. I said earlier on that it is advised that you shouldn't match uh, one agent to two words because of uh, time for us to do the documentation and everything. It might not be, it might be difficult for us to easily uh, look at it. So it is preferable that one agent should be matched to a word. And then for your second question concerning the team lead, uh, it is strongly advised that the team lead should do the synchronization. Why? Because of accountability. Because now when you do it yourself and you have issues, Nobody knows your issue. Nobody was there when you did it. And the team lead might not really get the full picture of what actually happened. But once you can bring your, okay, you finish this buzzing. And then because the team lead to ask to give reports. So when you synchronize yourself, it doesn't have a clear view of what happened. But when you bring your app to him, he knows that, okay, this is the amount of uh, beneficiary speed this is the amount not paid. And you can also see it on the app itself. You understand? So when once this is done and everything is verified, because you don't just, because I've finished that, um, this buzz and let me just synchronize. You still have to do your proper checks to ensure everything went as planned before this buzzing, before synchronization. So it's actually advised your team should do it. That doesn't mean you will not be there. You would be there too, because you're the one that actually did it. So you will be there. So it's also for accountability purpose. So it's just advisable that the team lead uh, is actually present or does it himself. So is there any other question? Thank you very much. Um, can we take a, uh, can we take questions from uh, Osamu Yi? Osamu Yi, please can you ask your question? Yes, good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, just wanted to know what channels are used for the reporting of issues when they come up. Okay. The channels for reporting issues. Now, your team lead or 
your supervisor, let me put it that way. So I think uh, for every word, every word has a zone, right? And every zone has a supervisor. That's how it is. So the first thing is to report to your team. Your team lead should be the zone leader, I think. So your, your zone leader has a direct contact with the tech guys. So once you relate your issues to your zone leaders or your team, they have direct contact to the tech guys. So the issues we made uh, will be reported to them directly. You understand? So yes. yeah, yes. whoever chose you as agent, whatever, has a link to the tech guys. And the tech guys are the ones to solve every problem. So the tech guys consist of uh, three line and uh, nine post ICT. So during these buzzments, they are always on standby, 24 hours, always on standby to solve any issues. So once you have any issues, just put a phone call across and immediately such issues will be solved. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, let's take the one from Richard. I think I can see your hand up. Have you asked your question? No, Hello, Mr. Richard. All yes, right, go ahead. Good afternoon, Mr. Moderator and the whole house. Um, thank you for this uh, wonderful lecture. Um, we quite appreciate the good um, innovation. You know, so my question goes to us. Like, um, I, 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 I think we all know um, our nature in this country where like we know generally we we are kind of uh, aggressive people you know um with this kind of development i'm looking at a scenario whereby uh, an agent um an issue disposing a fund in a particular equation and maybe the beneficiary does it was not um as patient enough to understand that maybe the the hub was having challenges uh, during this disbursement how do we undo such a scenario. So my my my, my take is that um, is it possible that um, tree line or Naples uh, management help us to make um, the the app more seamless to operate either offline or, or online. Then secondly, um, the, about the the issue of um, synchronization after uh, completing the cycle, you go with or without disbursement. Um, is it is it is it um is it is it um right for for um, for the for the agent to 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 call, to to synchronize immediately or wait for confirmation to get to ensure that the issue has been resolved before synchronizing you get the permission of um, the the team lead or whoever is responsible for monitoring the, the process that's my question. Thank you. Okay, sorry, let me answer this. Um, your first question is um, that we should make the app to be seamless so that... So the, the truth of the matter is what we've done with the app today is to actually make it very seamless, which is why we support offline payments. And part of the issues that were recorded from the last disbursement, I'm not sure we have any center where it was difficult to pay a beneficiary that already like a beneficiary at locations. I'm not sure we had that kind of issue. As long as that beneficiary data has been downloaded on the PU on the mobile app, right? Payment would definitely pull through because it's not coming to the server to do any form of verification before payment happens. It's strictly offline. Now, there are chances that when you were um, downloading the beneficiary, that you did not download the entire beneficiary list. Meanwhile, you are trying to say, for instance, when you try to pay um, a beneficiary that is um, that has been downloaded by another person, more or less, right? You are trying to pay that person. Definitely, you will not see it on your PO, on your mobile app. So payment might not succeed for that kind of. You will see something like beneficiary not found. 
Okay. Right, that kind of error message. So um, as long as you have downloaded your beneficiaries and you've completed beneficiary download successfully, you have all the beneficiaries detail on your, on your mobile, there is no way you would record a failed payment at locations because it's offline. Now, the second question where you were asking about synchronization. Now, the reason why we have said don't synchronize immediately after disbursement until you um, converge more or less in a location where there is stable network is to ensure that you don't start synchronization and network goes off for any reason. That's basically why you are advised to converge in a location where you are certain that the network is fine, probably the location where you guys took off from. And the good thing now is that you are the IT people that would actually guide this um, agent and the coordinators on the field because anytime they have issues, it is important that you solve those kind of issues. Now, for instance, somebody might tell you that, oh, I've been trying to download beneficiary since and it's just rolling, right? By default, you already know that that kind of issue is network related, so you can advise. And um, like I painted earlier, somebody might want to um, pay a beneficiary and you won't find the record and you see um, record if the sherry does not exist or something relating to beneficiary not found. It means that that person that is trying to pay doesn't have that uh, beneficiary details downloaded on his mobile. So definitely you won't say it because the payment is strictly offline because we are assumed that there is no network in the locations where you are paying or it's possible there is network but we are not banking on that you know because um of the guideline from nctu that we must ensure that all payments are done in our offline mode okay so i, I believe that answers your question yes it does thank you very much You're welcome Uh, all right. The next person is um, Abdul Salam. Please go ahead with your question. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation, sir. So mine is not a, a question per se, but a, a kind of request. So number one, this uh, presentation, I think there is need to have it in our platform so that we can download and go through so that we can uh, 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 understand the gray areas more. Number two, if you can help us with a, uh, this, uh, uh, a kind of demo site so that we can practice and see how it is done. And if there is question before the real aspect come up, so that we can be certain. And my question is this, sir. Uh, the issue of, say, when uh, a beneficiary amount is not deducted from the from the platform that payment should not be effected and you talk of a manual process then i need expectation on this side. hello 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 I'm here, sir. So you were, you were asking about manual payments. Hello, are you there? You said, you said uh, if the beneficiary amount is not deducted. Yes. Continue, go on, the sir. system, the payment should not be effective. Yes, yes, that, that is the hard version. And uh, hey, and if it is manual, there is no how a system can deduct the payment because in manual you can't see anything uh, uh, like that. Because when it is when it is to be deducted, that one should be strictly online. So, uh, sir, first of all, sir, all the disbursement process is offline. So the only part that is online is the part where you download beneficiaries and when you download the payment schedule and when you synchronize the transaction. So by the time it gets to the field, already for you to be on the field, it is assumed that you have already taken uh, uh, you have already taken into consideration all the prerequisites that needs to be done beforehand. These all the steps that have, you need to have you have taken online already. 
So if you are now disposing and for one reason or the other, you can see the beneficial details and then uh, you can see that it is successfully disposed, but the payment, the amount is not impacted on your record, then that is a situation whereby you are advised to not pay the beneficiary so you can spend the beneficiary or third beneficiary to wait while you report the issue. So it is uh, it will be an a, a data integrity issue at the end of the day if uh, you bond paying when your uh, total accumulated amount is not deducted. Do you understand? So in this kind of case, uh, these activities are still offline. So you need to uh, contact the support person and and get yourself clarified before you continue uh, the disbursement process. Do you understand, sir? Yes, sir. Hey, sir, sir. Once again. Okay. The issue of having this uh, 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 presentation in our yeah. platform so that we can have it and go through. And that yeah, we've, we've, a, a we, have, we have already talked about that now. We have talked about that. I have, I have, I, I, I have shared this, this slide already in the group chat to everybody so you can see it in this Zoom chat. You can download it okay. live right now. You can see training NCTOP, SSP agent, a PowerPoint part. Uh, no, no problem. We've actually downloaded it, so we are going to share it to our okay. platform. Okay, so that's uh, the problem. Sure. All right. Uh, thank you for those answers. Uh, we still have some questions. Uh, please, I want to plead with us. Let us make it as brief as we can so we don't overflow issues. If someone has already asked what you want to ask, there is no need asking your own again, please. Thank you. Um, Techno WX3, I don't know who that is. I can see your hand up. If you know that your name is or your phone is displaying Techno WX3, please go ahead with your question. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, Sam Sudan. My name is Julius Afalabi. My name is Julius Afalabi. Okay. Hello? Right, yeah, go ahead. Hello. Go ahead, please. Okay, my name is Julius Safolabi from uh, Guzo Safara State. All right, go ahead. Yeah, I what really I want, what really I want to ask is the is this uh, nice. after, Hello? Go ahead, please. Yeah, after getting the beneficiaries uh, names from the from the module. It makes somebody to prepare himself to the feed or to the world that somebody is going to make a disbursement. So my question now goes thus: If the the names of the beneficiaries are already downloaded from the platform and get into the feed, and you are now having the challenges of assessing some of the beneficiaries, what measure can somebody be able to resolve that issue? That is one. Then the second aspect is this is a monetary aspect. Is there any security measure provided for the staffs to carry on that activities in every ward or in the field? Then the third question is the ICT, you know, be a advisor, a technician to the to the field workers. Is there any provisions or any measure or any provision of gadget for them to be able to tackle any challenges if at all it rises from the field? Thank you. Thank you for your question. I think those questions should be directed towards the organization and not three lines. So don't worry. I'm sure you'll get response to your question from the uh, from NIFOST itself and not from three line cards management because the question boils on security. I think most of the time for those who have been involved in this exercise, I think they used to go with postal security. At least that's the internal security measures we have in our organization. Then what was your other question again? Uh, the one that has to do with uh, the gadgets. ICT in collaboration with financial yeah. services have been able to make up, uh, available devices such as tablet, even in some cases, mobile uh, phones, where they feel the tablet may not be okay for them. Some people were provided with mobile phones to ensure that they deliver on these services. So if we are to render these services in your zone or your district, as the case may be, I'm very quite sure that you will be armed with the necessary gadgets and devices to ensure that you do it effortlessly. I don't know if I have answered your question, please. Yes, you do. Thank you so much, Mr. Kisley. All right. Uh, please, uh, Obioma, I think Thank I saw you. your hand up. Obioma, please, go ahead, please. Obioma, are you there? Thank you. 
Yes, I'm here. I'm here. I want to thank the facilitators and the, the programmers of this. Um, yeah, what, what I want to ask is just because they have asked some of the questions I wanted to ask. I want to know what solution do not have a, a, a that is, cannot be used. Is it that they have a solution question? Thank you. Sorry, I didn't get your question. I don't know if the facilitator got it. You, your network was breaking. No, Can, you take, breaking Can yeah. you take your question again? I said that, yes, I'm in again. I said, I do not know whether this, this um, solution has a Windows version or it is it only on mobile phone that it can run. That's my question. Facilitator, please. Okay, yeah, the scope of uh, the solution right now runs on uh, the Android device. It runs on the Android device and some specific uh, things were taken into consideration uh, for that decision because uh, the payment was to be offline and then it was supposed to be uh, a device that is handy that you can uh, take along with you anywhere you go and uh, been able to use it uh, without so much stress of carrying devices up and down. So it would have been much more stressful if we were to go the Windows out where you have to have your computer and attach probably a webcam to it and, and all of that. So uh, those were the considerations and that was why the decision of doing the um, Android technology and then uh, on your uh, the mobile device. So that was why the decision was made. So I don't know if I answer your question, sir. Uh, very correct. You have. You have responded to that. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much. Lastly, Mr. Sam Sudin, please go ahead with your question. I think that's the last question we're going to do. No, I have a question. Uh, okay. I didn't see your hand. I cannot <laughs> okay, sir. The host. <laughs> okay, sir. I have a, uh, another two questions. The first one is, uh, is it possible for an agent to download a different beneficiary or schedule apart from his? If it is, can you advise on the measure to be taken? Uh, then the second question is, uh, it, uh, I assume that uh, since it can work online, it has been taken care of from the design, but I feel then I uh, picture a, a, a scenario. For example, a user has downloaded the beneficiary and he has downloaded the schedule. Then the, on the field, there is no network. Um, oh, before going to the field, he has uh, deleted, let me say, his phone cache. And uh, how can he log in back to the system? Or oh, is there, uh, oh, he has, uh, yeah, he has deleted or cleared his cache. How can he? Download back onto the uh, Android platform because that's the design that has been coming off or a technical something that can happen due to uh, negligence of some uh, some of us. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay, so first of uh, uh, regarding the question, so I would say that uh, every uh, process that needs to be online is advised to have been done before coming to the feed. So you must have uh, yourself very well and um, make sure that um, you are fine for the online process before coming to the field. And uh, so I was still going to talk when we are talking about the issue of clearing cash. So those were the issues that uh, we discovered. And then um, that was why we uh, advised as much as possible to uh, uh, try as much as possible to abstain from using your own device because um, you want to still do social media, do some other stuff, listen to music on your phone while uh, you are uh, doing something that is as sensitive as this. So it is um, advisable to, if at all you are using your mobile device, try as much as possible not to go to settings at all. Do not tamper with the phone's memory at all, because we all understand that uh, this process is offline and um, every of this data is your ends until you are able to successfully synchronize. If you are not able to successfully synchronize, it is still assumed that the data, the record of your payment is still in your hands and then you have to account for it. So then is when you are successfully synchronized, then you can go ahead and use your device for whatever you want to use it for after you have been cleared that, okay, your records are fine and complete. So it's advisable not to uh, 
touch your phone cash at all. So you said if at all somebody mistakenly touched your phone cash, okay, it is safe. Well, if the person has not started disposing at all, it is safe. So it's really dangerous when the person has probably just halfway. So in that case, if you clear your phone cash and you are not able to do offline login again, so you are still able to log in if you connect online. So that way you are still able to log in if you connect online. But uh, if you have started this disbursement, uh, I'm afraid for uh, data integrity. So at that point, uh, you have uh, cleared some of your payment data. The first question, sir. The first question, uh, it was like, can put in camera? Hello, I said the first question. You've not answered the first question, sir. What was your first question? Can you take it again, please? I say, okay, I say, is, is it possible for an agent to download a different beneficiaries or schedule apart from the one has that has been assigned to him? I'm coming. If it is possible. Eh? Go ahead, please. I say, Sorry. If it, Go ahead, Mr. If it is, If it is possible, can you advise on the measure to be taken? Okay, uh, so the uh, uh, possibility of this kind of uh, was actually factored in when uh, the system was designed, and um, that was why you noticed that um, you don't get to determine uh, uh, which word you want to go to. So once uh, we were provided with each, your name and the word you want to, to automatically, you are matched the beneficiary in that schedule. So you don't get to select the schedule you want to pay, uh, the, the, the beneficiaries you want to pay. So once you click on download schedule, Automatically, the schedule that has been matched with your with your with your name as the head from the back office is what you get to download. So the possibility of this kind of error happening is actually zero because you would not be able to determine the schedule you want to download yourself because the schedule has already been mapped. You have already been mapped with the word that was presented to us uh, at the back office. I don't know if that answers your question, sir. Yeah, you have. Thank you. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Felix, okay. you have the floor, please. Okay. Um, my question is uh, somehow funny, but uh, I believe that as an IT people, we should be we should be talking more on the technical aspect rather than talking on the presentation because I think the presentation is explicit enough. Uh, for us to see what uh, the main process is. So I want to ask a, a question. Assuming I have downloaded the disbursement, I've done all the, all the necessary uh, requirements. And as I was about going out for disbursement, something happened, my phone freezed. And my phone was, I, I was asked to press maybe the volume or whatever it is. And before I know it, the phone, the phone has formatted and I have downloaded the disbursement, what happens? Then secondly, sir, if you check Facebook, if you check WhatsApp, no matter how heavy the, the picture you send, Facebook has a way of um, compressing the pictures to make it very light. So even some of the pictures are just one KB. So what, um, what size is the, is the picture, is the photograph in the application that makes it so, heavy that you download 300 photograph, which is supposed to be like uh, 300, uh, 3 MB, is that you are not telling us that you cannot use one gig to download 300 um, a photograph that is supposed to be 3 MB, even if it is 600, that's supposed to be 600 MB, uh, 6 MB. So what type of, what is the size of the picture and how can you be able to reduce the size of the picture so that even with small phones, small phones, because technology is evolving and you are, people are looking at, okay, what is the most uh, cheapest way to actually do business? And um, if small phones can do it, it will be more economical for Nipos and it will be more profitable for the organization because you are using little money to get um, a bigger uh, interest. So those are the two questions that I have. Here, Please, here. is the facilitator still there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Did you get uh, the comment or observation? Yeah, so 
I I under okay. Let me just yeah go back so I can see if I can if I can if I can, if I, if I can get you. So you said um, I that, said uh, I have downloaded disbursement everything, but as I was going out to do the payment to do the final uh, disbursement, my phone freezed because there must be accident on the way, and at the end of the day they asked me to press one or two things, and as the agent I may not be technically sound enough. I just press the button and I found out that my entire phone was just formatted. What happens? So that's what I told. That's what I've been saying. The last question I think I spoke about that uh, in cases like this, uh, mm -hmm. you have not started paying, so it is it is okay. The situation can still be addressed. So what you just need to do is to uh, report the issue uh, to the technical support person, and they will uh, uh, reactivate you. And once you are set up again on your mobile device you'll be able to redownload the schedules okay. so what you just need to do is that make sure that all the periodical side that will uh, 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 ensure that you are able to disburse uh, seamlessly you have taken care of it before getting to the field so my second question is on the five size of the of the picture why is it so heavy that 300 transact 300 pictures um we fill up a space of a one of a one gig ram so 300 pictures will not um, fill the space of a one gig ram so by the time you take these pictures uh the uh, technologies have been put in place to actually uh compress these pictures so the pictures that are saving on your phone in our home record on your phone are not saved as picture but they are saved in the file and the format that have compressed it to save so, and I would also love to point it out that uh, uh, from our own test, a record of about um, 5,000 beneficiaries amounts to less than 500 MB um, database size on your phone. So, and I think that is enough for on our hand uh, for us to actually be able to do that because if you have 5,000 uh, records uh, on your phone, documents records on your phone, that amounts to uh, about uh, uh, 10,000 um, pictures for alternate caregiver and the caregiver itself in, in several aspects. So that is about uh, 10,000 pictures. And if you can beat this uh, database size to 500 MB or five 600 MB on your device, I think that is fair enough, sir. Okay, but we still want to um, plead with you that you should, also, you should still consider looking at the the picture size to reduce more because we've seen the technology Facebook uses, the technology WhatsApp actually uses. No matter how you see some of their pictures, is just one KB. You send one, you send the picture. You will, uh, sir, you will agree with me that uh, Facebook is not running an offline storage for you. So, whichever way you still um, add the cloud storage somewhere that you still interact with to use these social medias, all of these records, all of these records. Are being cast online, offline on the phone. So this will also answer to why uh, some of these uh, files are large. So even if we beat a one MB picture down to 50 KB, by the time you multiply it by 5,000 beneficiaries that you have downloaded, and then now you know, you, you, the record for beneficiaries is even different from the payment records. By the time you now sum it with the payment record again. And you see that um, uh, fair enough having this um, uh, 500 MB record uh, database record is um, still fair enough, sir. Because okay. uh, the system we are running is totally offline, not online. Okay. It does make the totally offline. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. I think we've been able to exhaust our. Uh, questions. I want to appreciate especially the facilitator three-line card management service. Thank you so much for those of you who have contributed yeah. in one way or the other to ensure that this uh, training section is a success. Uh, so in addition, we want to really appreciate you, uh, Lua Tosi and uh, my friend Chubuzo. Thank you very much for giving us your time. We my post the entire my post appreciates you, and the ICT department also appreciates you and uh, appreciate your effort. And uh, we are looking forward to working with you in a in a larger scale. We know that this um, 
exercise has been flagged on and we expect we are hoping that it will be extended to other regions and we are, we are hoping that one day we will definitely from now we even from now we started working um, in good relationship and i pray that it will continue like that thank you very much Oluwato si thank you chibuzo uh, and thank you my dear colleagues thank you the facilitator you went off and the moderator you went off are you still there <laughs> I was working. I was working. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Uh, for the ICT, my colleagues, uh, the GMICT have asked me to inform you that uh, it's a continuous exercise. Uh, we know that what. So. Thank you once again, and we say God bless you. So to this, we have come to the end of the program, and we say have a very wonderful afternoon. And it is All right. The exercise has ended. You can familiarize yourself if you wish to, and you can exit if you feel like exiting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Felix. Don't forget me. I better go. Uh, no problem. <laughs> Mr. Felix, we saw pictures and videos that our headquarters was on fire. Waiting to happen. Now, no one tell us.